How's it going, everybody? It's me, Shane. I'm here to give you another Pokemon Horizons episode review. I know it's been a while, but we're back. We're back with episode 32, Lapras' Feelings for its friends. And before I go any further, please hit that like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you can be notified of more reviews just like this. If you want to support me, I had a Patreon. The link is in the description below. So, I know it's been a while. Uh, I know a lot of stuff has happened in Pokemon. Some really funny stuff that I've seen from clips. But we're going to try to get through it, right? We're going to try to get through it, especially in this month of February. How are we doing, everybody? So, I remember in my last review, I was making fun of angry Lapras. I'm like, <laughs> angry Dratini. Not Dratini. Angry uh, Dragonite. Ooh, angry Wigglytuff, which actually, I actually like it. Wigglytuff is very cute angry. Or evil Togepi. When you look at this giant um possibly ancient lapras and then you realize like if you would think of a sea monster it would be this thing and it's massive and in this episode it actually turns around and attacks the crew on the on, on you know on the brave asagi while they're on the water and it freezes them on there and i'm thinking to myself oh yeah no that is actually terrifying if i were on a if I were on the sea and some massive 13, 14, 15 foot monster is looking down and has the ability to ramp me and to freeze me in place. Yeah, no, that is freaking terrifying. Just out of the ordinary for those type of Pokemon, but freaking terrifying, right? Uh, we do get a bit of Terrapagos kind of guilt trip in this thing with the whole screeches. The wow, you know, I'm not going to do those into your ear, but um, you get the pirate mons jumping on the boat um it's funny because <sighs> diane diane diana freed smartest people on the dang boat one and what one happens to be the oldest well no landau is actually might be older than diana now that i think about it but they're so dang smart right um like <laughs> freed said yeah no i figured that the mist showed up too fast and you know when we look at the fact they were trying to steal food and the captain he was duped like they stole his food i mean yeah it, it, white mist technically mist is a move that lapras can do it's actually a move that waylord can do too and we actually see waylord do it at the end of this episode but hilarious just the fact that they're able to pick up on that fast now uh i almost call these guys mvp right now but the heavy hitters come in because chancy and rock Ruff can't do it the kids are trying to help but with all these different pokemon including galarian slowbro which i'm trying to think if galarian slowbro can actually swim but it arcanine cat pikachu and charizard once they show up it's like it's a get, get out of here and run away and they do run away, and they're able to follow them for a little bit until Lapras turns around and does the thing. But uh, they're able to follow because the MVP was Landau and Quagsire. And we actually get a glimpse of uh, Landau's eye, which if you play Pokemon Scarlet and Violet and you play the DLCs, the, uh, was it the Teal Mask and the Indigo Disc, you would know that characters Carmine, Kieran, and I believe Miss Briar, they have particular looking eyes that almost look like cat eyes we get a glimpse of landau's eye kind of looks like that looks a little bit yellow but looks very cat eyeish because he's turning the boat and everything because freeze telling him, hey you know i need you to take the helm while we figure all this other stuff out everyone has jobs of course free didn't tell everybody what his plan was but landau has quagsire using surf one of the coolest moments probably I've seen in the last couple of Pokemon episodes. It, it this was I like when a character that's like, eh, I don't I, I give you guys cool wise riddles. I used to own this boat. We fixed the boat up. Oh no, I'm actually I'm actually a total badass while I'm out on here on the ocean. Right? <clears throat> uh so that was the MVP. Now Lapras's Pirate Crew. So Liko wants to understand them, right? Of course, she, that's her whole deal. Her whole dream is to understand Pokemon. That's not really much of a dream. That's just a goal, but whatever. And she's smart enough to go, oh, empty boxes. This is how we find them. And they find them. Now, what annoys the hell out of me is this weird double standard that 
because in some Pokemon instances, and we can talk about with the last, you know, the last of the series with Ash, we have um, just trying to get rid of some of these. Diana asked, has the kids if they thought what they were doing was wrong, you know, stealing the stuff. And he's like, we might need to think otherwise. And I'm thinking to myself, look, Diana, I like you, but I know I'm five minutes in. I'm just going to say anyway, I call him bullshit, right? I'm calling bullshit because they're going around robbing boats. Now, there's a bunch of different Pokemon from all different regions. A lot of these Pokemon can't swim. The way they depend on getting around is Waylord, right? You got a couple of flyers. I think uh, I think Mandibuzz is there. But he gathered all these Pokemon. Why did you gather these Pokemon? You gather these Pokemon just so you can steal from humans? Like, the math isn't mathing, right? It'd be one thing if I saw a flashback where it's like Lapras is traveling around and it sees hurt Pokemon. It goes, okay, let me get you hurt Pokemon. Let me get you. And then it has a rivalry with this Waylord that has scars on it as well. So you're like, okay, those two have battled. And it goes, all right, join my crew. And it joins the crew. It ferries everyone around. And it's like, okay, well, we got to find food for you guys because... These islands I'm going to, no food. So we're just going to start stealing from humans under the guise of helping humans. So it's a way of not attacking, but getting what you want, right? This weird double standard. And I'm, I, it's, hold on. I, I, I need to make sure I say this uh, part for part. So Diana says their ideas of good and bad don't apply here, there, there because, you know, food... <sighs> They they get the food and they share it with friends, right? Pokemon people coexist in different ways. They don't always stand side by side. What Brad what bridges that divide between people and Pokemon are Pokemon trainers. And my last thing I wrote there was like, what? Now I can't agree. Pokemon trainers working with Pokemon who you capture, or maybe you're gifted like Ash and just have the Pokemon come up to you and be like, I want to join you, stuff like that, right? Gift and battle and then catch. You can foster bonds, and then it helps you and your Pokemon understand each other. A lot of times we've seen Ash's Pokemon go and talk to wild Pokemon, be like, no, no, this dude's cool. We're all cool. We're going to help you and whatnot. I can agree with that. But to be like, oh, it's okay for these Pokemon to steal from these people because they just got to do it to survive i'm thinking to myself why don't they just go to a place that has resources right there's many islands that have renewable resources like and you you are magical beings uh i know there's a toad screw i'm trying to think if there was any there's an ambipom there's a toad screw I, we watched when we got the giant Olivia. We watched Pokemon plant seeds and make trees grow in a matter of minutes and seconds. They can't go to a place where there's grass Pokemon. Everybody lives in harmony. And we go, all right, cool. We plant, we grow, we plant, we grow, and we have a community. They're just being pirates just because, well, we're just together. This is all we know. By the way, we're not going to warn any humans that this is the legend. We're just going to let them do. It's not bad, guys. It's not bad. I would think the people that were scared half to death and lost, you know, a lot of their cargo, maybe their charge for the cargo. Hell, <clears throat> maybe that's all they had. And that was their hard earned money. But no, it's it's fine. The logic is flawed. I think it's really stupid. I think it's really dumb. Is not the same as like the what what other city Pokemon have we seen that just go about stealing and then you're like, eh, they need the food, right? This is active, like these things are actively plotting scams. Just I don't know. I I think that's dumb. That's just my my opinion, right? But of course, they get there, they're friendly, right? They feed everybody, they have a little bit of a party, the boat comes in. And Liko asked Lapras, like, Lapras, we come with us? And we get the whole mystifying look back into Terrapagos and everyone's uh, memories. Obviously, Galeria Moltres and uh, Arbolivia pop out. 
And we see that all of them made a promise to Lucian to meet with him in Rakua, the, the, that promised paradise land. And we get giant crying Lapras. And its buddies are like, yeah, you should go with them. They go and get go get his Pokeball. It's giant mechanical weird Pokeball. It jumps in it. It's with Liko. I don't know why. Towards the middle <clears throat> slash end of this episode, she finally decides to get that special satchel that L- Lucian had with where you put the balls and it looks just why don't you wear that most of the time or just have it hidden on you like if I'm finding a giant Lapras why wouldn't I send out the giant grass Pokemon to eh, what what whatever man um I still don't understand why they just let those guys go. This is this then the, basically the end of this episode is we find out that Waylord can do the white mist move too, and they all set sail again. And they're like, okay, well now we got to find Black Wayquaza. Oh no, it's above us. All right, well it came to us. So and Terrapagos is getting you know more and more powered up as time goes on. Well, next time. My next episode I need to watch is Rayquaza fighting uh, Amatheo and looks like Terrapagos is getting powered up. So it's the bellowing black Rayquaza. I'm just, mm, I don't know how to feel about this episode. And I know this review is a bit fast. I, I didn't want to sit on it too too long, meaning time-wise. Hope you've watched it. Please go take a look at it. It's The highlight is Landau. And Quacks, Quacks are doing the surf move. I appreciate Freed and Diana being the smartest ones in the room. Especially when I'm a viewer. And I'm calling like, oh, these two Pokemon just magically appear and take your stuff. Yeah, they rob, they're robbing you. The berries were a dead giveaway. But you're not telling anybody that, hey, there's a group of Pokemon that are going out there to rob you. If you could tell them, be like, hey... These Pokemon need help. Maybe you can help them out. Nah, nah. Like, that's... I don't know. I don't know. Uh, the end of this episode, instead of, again, a seminar. I don't know why I haven't seen, seen many seminars. But, and, oops. Instead of a seminar, we have a Terrapagos' sparkly adventure diary. Where it's late night... Um, Late night moments on the, on the train where it's like Fue Coco and Snow Runt and people are asleep and Terrapago hits them and they all fall down and he has Snow Runt ice beaming everything. And they're all basically having fun, right? You know, I don't know why Palmy is, is being a scaredy cat of this group. It's one of my favorite newer Pokemon. Please make this thing grow a spine. But yeah, they hit berries. It's time to eat. Roy finds Fue Coco along with Cat Pikachu. I I don't know what I gave this episode when I first watched it, but I'm hmm, I want to give it a three point five. I'm pushing towards giving it a four. It's between a three point five and a four. I'll let you decide when you watch. And I'm usually not flip floppy like this, but I'm doing doing it like this. It gets the four because of Landau and that cool Quagsire moment. I want to give it 3.5 because of the logic. It's like, hey, you know, we our logic doesn't apply to them. Okay, cool. Why aren't we telling people, though? Like, why shouldn't we go, hey, they kind of, they need food and they hunt, hunt every single day. And I don't think they're going to be able to do the same thing again, though, right? Because Lapras was the one that does the singing. So you all can do your little miss thing where you all going to pretend to be in the shape of Lapras. Who's going to do singing and stuff? To my knowledge, no Pokemon that was with that crew could do a song type move. Just pack it in. Go to a place that has resources. All right. I feel like it, I feel like a little bit more backstory should have been done for this one, especially since this was a, a, a Pokemon that gathered other Pokemon. You could have shown us a non uh, verbal Meaning only Pokemon language between Lapras and Waylord, seeing how they both got scarred up. Because you know they just had the battle, right? And just seeing how they collected all of these other Pokemon. Feels like something's missing here. So that's where the 3.5 comes in. The 4, again, it's for Landau. Let me know. Please let me know what you think in the comment section below. Do you think I'm being too hard on this? 
would you like me to start coupling these episodes together? Like I'm on, what is it? I'm, I'm this is 32. I'm pretty sure 33, 4, 5, 6. Pretty sure we're at 37. You guys want me to couple it together? Let me know in the comment section below. And I'm I'm serious. I'm I'm very serious, actually. I'm trying to communicate with you. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you want in the comment section. See if we can get it done, right? Well, again, let me know what you think. Comment section right there. Leave a comment. Hit that like button. Subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be notified of more reviews like this. I appreciate you guys. I truly do. Please be good. Be blessed. Wash those hands. Be good to yourselves. Be good to others. Either way it goes, please don't be a jerk. All right. And remember, there are people out there that care about you. You we can all we all have family. We all can make our own family, much like a family of pirates, which is kind of the theme of One Piece. But regardless of all, all that of what I'm saying, there are people out there that care about you and rather talk to you today than to miss you and mourn you tomorrow. Please make sure you reach out to someone. All right. All right, and uh, I can't wait to talk to you next time. We just, I'm hoping the Rayquaza versus uh, Sarah Luge or Soul Blades fight will pump me up a bit because this episode with some of the logic was just unbelievable. Well, until next time, I'll catch you later.